Welcome back to Sip to Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the five interceptions that the Baltimore Ravens got versus the San Francisco 49ers Monday night in a huge, huge, huge epic showdown in the NFL of the two best teams. Now, Kyle Hamilton had two interceptions. Marcus Williams had one. Pat Queen had one. Marlon Humphrey had one, which is probably the most interceptions we've seen in one game in a while for the Baltimore Ravens, but... They took a guy, Brock Purdy, who was probably the front runner for the MVP, and he kind of changed the narrative a little bit. And maybe now Lamar has the edge in that category. But let's take a look at how the interceptions happen, why they happen, and then we'll take a look at the end zone view to kind of get a, a idea of what maybe Brock Purdy was thinking or or seeing before those interceptions happen. Welcome back to Sip to Tally Films. With the- I appreciate you guys coming back through and um, again this video is brought to you by the Patreons uh, all of my Patreons should be scrolling across the screen right now I want to say thank you to you guys you guys are the lifeline the bloodline of the channel and if you want to become a Patreon go to patreon.com backslash sip the tally and enter or join one of the four tiers thank you let's get into this film now we're going to take a look at all five of the interceptions and kind of see what happened from a schematic standpoint and then on four of the five we're going to take a look at the end zone view and see if we can kind of see and kind of what Brock Purdy was thinking and what he saw coming and whatnot so let's look at, take a look at the all-22s first, and then we'll come back and take a look at the end zone and kind of get a, a eye view of what maybe Brock Purdy saw. On this first one, this is the first drive where we get the interception right toward the end zone. And they run a little two-man concept at the top. And you see an in and an out, and you see Kyle kind of got his eyes on it. And what, it, what should happen is one of these routes should be deeper to hold Kyle there, but they're not. But both of them cutting short. The two guys underneath take them. Now, with this happening, Kyle's eyes instantly go to Brock Purdy. And you see Debo kind of streaking in the middle, and he should be open. But from my point of view, Brock's a little late. And the fact that those two routes didn't occupy Kyle any longer, he was able to switch his eyes to the QB, see the ball as it's being thrown. And at this point, it's kind of too late for Brock because you can't stop that. And then he takes it. Takes it and picks it off. Again, if one of those routes at the top of your screen had went maybe in the end zone and would have threatened Kyle, he would have had to expand to cover it because it was a cover two type look. So he would have had to expand to cover. If one of these routes, say say Kittle's route, take him off the field. Kyle got to respect that. And then Debo fits right, right in there. But they, but they don't. They're both a short routes. They're uh, covered by the two underneath coverages. Kyle eyes just come back to, to Purdy. Wants to see the two short routes. Now his eyes go to Purdy. Let's look at it from the backside. Now, I think when I saw it from this angle, Brock had an, an opportunity to, to get a touchdown on this, even with the short routes. But he's late. When, when you got this route right here, look at all this space. That ball got to be thrown right there. Look. And so if we're looking at landmarks, that ball should be thrown right at the middle of the E in 49ers. Because that would be right over Roquan's head. And Roquan won't get there because Roquan's just not planting – Debo's going to zoom across right there. So that ball should be thrown right there right now. And Debo immediate. Because Roquan is just not planning to even change direction. So even though they Debo kind of looks like he's behind him, you got to think about the depth on this too. So if he if he zooms this ball right past uh, Roquan, that's a touchdown. But look look where it should be thrown. Now I'm going to show you where it is thrown at. Look at Kyle over there sitting. See Kittle breaking out. And the other, the other receiver is going to break in. Kyle I is going to instantly go to Brock Purdy. Now, see, the ball ain't even thrown yet. His eyes instantly are looking. Look at look at Kyle's eyes. He can see everything from here over, probably with his peripheral and in the straight, direct line of sight. And again, the ball, the ball should be right here, remember? The ball should be right in this area right here. It's not thrown yet. The ball is going to be thrown way over here. Watch, closer to Kyle. And Kyle barely even moves to get this. He took about two steps. So not only, not only did the because, you know, some people tried to blame Shanahan on the play design. Play design was not the greatest. They should have had something to, to threaten Kyle deep. But that ball was late. That ball was late. 
Next pick. Um, and we talked about this with uh, Coach DC yesterday, the, the double cat blitzes. You got Marlo coming on the blitz, and you got Brandon Steven coming on the blitz. Now, what I like about this is, and this is a lot of quick decisions by everybody, and we talked about this. Look at Brock, Brock Purdy's looking at that, and he sees the blitz coming. He see that. Debo sees it too, and so he stops his route and just gives the quarterback his numbers, which is perfect adjustment because this is a run play. All these guys run blocking. Look, he down the field. This is a run play. But Purdy saw the, saw the blitz when he was looking that way. Debo recognized it too. They stopped. So this is a really good adjustment by the 49ers. A great post-snap adjustment by the 49ers. Great post-snap. Great post-snap rep- rec- recognition. But he, Rock Purdy don't use his angles to get uh, um, Debo a better ball. Now, throwing it this way, it's kind of tough for a right-handed quarterback to use different arm angles. If it had been toward the bottom, maybe he could have dropped down side arm or whatnot. But going this way, it's, it's tough. Unless you're going to throw it backwards and you got to be an alien to do that. Brandon Steven does a good job of batting it down. And since Marlowe was coming on his blitz anyway, He's already in the backfield. And so not giving Brock Purdy a chance to knock it down, he bats it right to Marlowe. Being in the right place, right time. Right place, right time. Great great athleticism by Brandon Stevens and by Marlowe to go find the tip. That's interception number two. So we're not going to have an um, end zone on that one because it's pretty obvious, obvious of what happened. But the fact that they was able to recognize that on the fly like that, that says a lot for the intelligence of, of those guys over on the other side too. Now pre-snap, it looks like blitz zero. You got one, two, three. You got six guys at the line of scrimmage. You pretty much got all your other guys covered. And Kyle is kind of creeping to give it away that he's going. So it looks like man up top, man on the slide in Marcus Williams, man at the bottom with Geno Stone and Kittle, and man with Marlowe and Ayuk. But... Man, we always talk about what you see pre-snap ain't always what you get. Post-snap, it turns into three deep, three under. So it looks like a man zero blitz, and it turns into something else post-snap. Now, you, you, he probably thought everybody was coming. Now they not. You're only getting a four-man rush. You're getting a five-man rush. You're getting a five-man rush. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're getting a four-man rush. You got your three deep, three under. Everybody's covered. Everybody's locked up. If you see on the screen, nobody has separation. Not one soul in a route has separation. And then CMC is on the ground right here because the penalty is actually on CMC for cutting um, Kyle while he was engaged with 65. Now look at Kyle on the ground right there. That's Kyle on the bottom of that pile. And again, defense did a good job of plastering in this scramble drill. A good job of plastering. Kyle just gets up, kind of wonders a little bit, bat it ball, find him again. Found him again. So not, not only was the penalty against him, he got up, continued to play, made the pick. And you'll see you'll see him engage with 65 here, and then CMC going to come in and kind of cut him, and that's what the penalty was on. Right there. One high low. You can't high low a player. You can't do that. Now, at this point, Brock probably should have got rid of the ball, but he didn't. You see him direction Kittle to come back and just made a bad decision. Great play by Marlon. Yeah, Marlon played some good football um, Monday night. Some good football Monday night. Got this one right here to, to um, Pat Queen. I think the Ravens are cover four right here. You know, a bunch of different rules when it comes to cover four, but. You know, it's that's the, the country cover for, but it's a bunch of different rules depending on how people run routes and whatnot. But they all, they're where they're supposed to be. Got your three underneath, your four going to be deep with their different rules and whatnot. And really, there's nothing there but your check down. He tries to hit the check down, he kind of misfires and throws it right to Queen. Queen with a little return. The former running back, look like the running back day is over with, PQ. But I appreciate the pick. But let's take a look at it from this angle. We should have credited Travis Jones with this. Watch Travis Jones. They got Travis Jones in a fire technique. We know how big and, and, and massive Travis is. He's an interior D lineman. They got him at a five technique. Watch what he does to this tackle. He actually hits Purdy and makes the ball flutter out of his hands. He destroys this tackle. 
Yeah. Straight leverage with one arm throw by. And again, tell me Dr. Rush ain't helping these guys out. Look at that. Straight power. Got him off balance. Now I'm going to throw you right out of the way and go right by him. Once he got him off balance, look at the quickness to get inside of him and go straight to the QB and hit Brock Purdy. That's why that ball flutters out like that. Straight to PQ. Travis played some good football uh, Monday night. A lot of people, I'm just, a lot of people played some good football Monday night. Let's just put it like that. <laughs> Cause this was these were two of the best teams in the league, and I still think they're the two best teams in the league. And um, we just got the job done. And the last touchdown, um, obviously it was like toward the end of the game, and they were just trying to get in the end zone. If I'm not mistaken, this is fourth down. But the only thing I would say is Sam Donald had he should have went to the bottom of the screen because you got six Ravens up at the top of your screen versus only three 49ers. But then you look down here at the bottom. That's a one-on-one -on -one with Ayuk and Stevens. And, you know, I love what Brandon Stevens doing, but I take this one-on-one -on -one over this three versus six any day. But I, I don't think Sam Donald even looked down there to, to notice he had a one-on-one. -on -one. Then Marcus comes up with the pick, seal the game, take a knee, slide, all that good stuff. But again, from the back end. I mean, there's really no way for him to throw the ball. Look at that. That's four guys converging on George Kittle. He's just going to try to high point it. Sam Darnold, you're not built like that. Kittle is. Sam Darnold, not. But I just want to take a deeper look at all five of the interceptions, kind of see the how, the when, the why, how they happened, and kind of explain it to you in my terms. I appreciate you guys for coming through. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Like the video if you've not liked the video already. Subscribe if you've not subscribed. And hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop. Remember the motto, FTMF. Because the film don't lie, unlike some people. Peace and love, and I'll see y'all soon.